20 years of changes we've highlighted this slide is that in the 90s, when the South African government's priorities were the change in government, but also the globalization part, I think, which was important, what did we do with the IDC? We realized that we needed to change. But for us, it was important that as an IDC, that the issue of ownership change it becomes one of our key priorities. And hence, our investments in that, if you look at our previous investments, uh, that's where we played a, a, a bigger role. But we also were uh, aware, or alive, to the fact that not as much as we have the different provinces, but not all provinces and some of the areas were not uh, benefiting, at least from the financing that IDC was providing. And hence, we looked at rural development, but we also looked at consciously encouraging investments in the different parts of the provinces. If we look just broadly on the overall uh, achievements in relation to the value of approvals over the last 20 years, about 128 billion rands uh, was approved. And that represents about 3.1% of, of gross uh, fixed capital formation. And not only have we invested that, but we looked at ensuring that those investments indeed goes to those sectors which have an impact of ensuring that whether directly or indirectly making an impact into the economy. Now if you look on the job aspects in particular, uh, because we do measure uh, ourselves on a number of developmental outcomes, uh, but in this, uh, for today, we just highlighted uh, I think jobs and, and regional integration and uh, black economic empowerment. Uh, for, for the amount of money that we've invested Directly, because what we've tried to always do, probably it's the modesty in us, that we've measured the direct impact as far as jobs are concerned. I think for, for the 20 years, about 360,000 uh, jobs were created from those investments that we've made, of which about 43,000, we say. If you, if you look on the graph uh, on your right, the, we started only measuring the jobs saved really in earnest in, in 2007. I think when we were starting to intervene in, in, in relation to when we, we got a sense that the recession was going to be, uh, was starting. And in fact, it was in earnest one, one, one such intervention where as the IDC, we were, we were playing a role as far as ensuring that we help those companies that uh, have experienced the, the, the impact of recession. In relation to black economic empowerment, um, our approach has changed over time. So remember at the beginning, our main emphasis has been on transfer of ownership. And that's where we've invested. But what, what we also did over time was to ensure that as far as the empowerment is concerned, we broadened it. And hence, we looked at the communities and the workers to be part of the economy. And we came up with uh, mechanisms for them to be able to participate. And then, from the experiences that we, we, uh, we saw over time, it was important that, that we look at what we, we then referred to as expansionary black economy. What we said there was, it is well and good to do just ownership change. But one could, at the same time, ensure that the economy, or at least the companies that you fund, actually grow in themselves. So what you do is, whilst you're doing the ownership change, why don't you expand the capacities of those companies? Which is why we looked at the uh, expansionary BE. And now what we're doing is now we're looking at black industrialists. Uh, what you find is, even though we did not uh, label it like that in the past, our interventions even then uh, have resulted in some of the black industry participants in the, in the panel. So over that period, about 48 billion rands was approved to fund black economy.